Welcome everybody and thank you for coming on behalf of Banner Capital Bank and uh, Swagger Construction, Robert Chamberlain and the city. Uh, we'd like to uh, uh, thank you for coming. Um, everybody knows the history and lore of the old Kitchen Coast property, uh, whether it's a tired traveler, a honeymooner, or a, a wayward home for uh, politicians. We all know the, the, the great history of the property and unfortunately, we also all know the state of decay it fell into and kind of the ordeal that has been uh, undertaken to get to this point. But we're uh, delighted to be part of uh, the project. Uh, for those that don't know, uh, this is a tax increment financing. And I have to uh, give kudos to my colleague, Richard Braithwaite. When we first started working with Robert about seven or eight months ago, talking about this project, uh, Richard took one look at it and said, this thing screams for TIF. And so we went up and talked to uh, the mayor and the response and the support from the city council has been amazing. Um, we understand that this is the second TIF ever in the state of uh, Wyoming and the first one that has to do with uh, a commercial bank and with blighted property. So uh, for those that don't know TIF, and I think most of you probably do, Essentially what it does is it capitalizes future cash flows and we're able to take that capital and apply a but for test um, Meaning that but for the uh, development of this property the increased tax revenues wouldn't happen And so we're able to take that capital and create infrastructure and take care of blighted things and uh, things like uh, uh, mitigating the uh, environmental issues that are, are, are uh, are prevalent with this property and, and also uh, adding a public street and updating and uh, renovating utilities and all of this providing a genesis for what we think is going to be a very, very exciting uh, uh, project for all of us. And not only really, in our opinion, the uh, southwest part of Cheyenne, but likely for the whole Lincoln Way corridor. So we are just extremely excited to be part of this uh, this project and uh, with that introduction I want to turn it over to these two gentlemen and let them give you some insights um, from the developer perspective and of course then from the city's perspective so yeah. you want me to go first? Yeah, yeah go ahead go ahead well thank you I'm Jeff White president of City Council and uh, Mayor Collins couldn't be here today but um, you know it, it's it's this is a really significant accomplishment um, as we all know, since the hitch, as it was known, uh, suffered a catastrophic fire in 2010, there have been many uh, redevelopment efforts um, and uh, all, uh, nothing, nothing resulted from any of them. So when uh, city council members uh, and Mayor Collins set, uh, met, met in uh, January of this year to set forth our goals for 2021, uh, we were all in agreement that um, solving the problem of the hitching post property was a top priority. And then that led to uh, efforts over the next several months uh, that began with creating uh, an urban renewal authority and then also a hitching post urban renewal plan, uh, which allowed for the TIF that, that was just spoken about. So once uh, those things were accomplished, that set into motion the public-private partnership uh, that got us to where we are today. And I'm thoroughly convinced uh, that uh, without that partnership, problems of this magnitude would, would not be solved. So it's truly been a, a collaborative effort. Um, it's a nice calm day outside, so remediation of asbestos and demolition efforts on the buildings on the property are taking place as we speak. And um, I just want to say thank you to my colleagues on council, uh, particularly those that are here today, Brian Cook, Dr. Mark Greeny, Tom Seagrave, Pete Laybourne, Dr. Michelle Aldridge, and Scott Roybal for having the commitment to see this through. And uh, thank you to Mayor Collins uh, for being committed as well. And then I have to thank uh, Robert Chamberlain and Swagger Construction for uh, your vision and for your commitment to our community. Uh, also to uh, Banner for, for uh, your contribution as well. And then lastly, I just want to thank the many men and women that, on city staff who worked long and hard to uh, 
come up with options for us and uh, come up with a plan that finally put this project across the goal line. Uh, it, we wouldn't be here today without them. It's a great day uh, for Cheyenne and uh, the only thing that's going to beat it is when we're all back together again in the spring, uh, putting shovels in the ground. And I think we, uh, we all uh, very much look forward to that day. So I'll turn it over to you, Mr. Chamberlain. Perfect, well, yeah, just to add a little bit, I mean, this is an extremely exciting property, not just for us, but then also for the whole city as a whole. And, and this truly has been, as, as both these gentlemen have uh, reiterated, a true group effort. I mean, uh, to have the participation with the city mayor Collins and all of his team, uh, th that was a vital part in us being able to get this done. Uh, a big thanks to, you know, Banner, uh, both Richards, everybody involved on that side. As without that, you know, believing in the vision that we had, we wouldn't be able to get it done. And then we've had countless folks uh, within our organization that have played vital roles in, in getting stuff set up, making sure we got folks on site, really working through uh, the plan that we had kind of set out in January as it's been an extremely long process on this one. And so we're actually, you know, honored as Swagger Construction to be able to participate in this just because of the significance that it gives back to the city. Um, as Richard had said, it seems like everybody I talk to has some form of uh, connection with that site, you know, uh, whether I just heard the other day about, you know, folks remember going to prom there, you know, and stuff like that. And so for us to be able to uh, participate in that and really, oh yeah, okay, yeah, there's one right there. Yeah. Okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not together. Yeah. No. Yeah. <laughs> and, and different years. Yeah. <laughs> but, but to be able to, yeah. But to be able to participate in that and really give back to the city of such a blighted property that's been a nuisance for the past 10 years, it is truly an honor. It's a way that we can give back to you know this amazing city we have and, and really become a, a vital part in revamping that Western development. So we're excited to be a part of it. We got big plans that we'll probably go through in regards to the site plan. And so definitely an exciting project, not only for all of us in this room, but then for the whole city. One other point that uh, came to mind is uh, as we we're talking here is that uh, the city and its um, wisdom has included a much bigger parcel than even what Robert is developing. He's about a 10 acre piece and as I understand the whole KIF plan is closer to about 80 acres. So future development in terms of commercial, maybe some um, multifamily and single family homes down the road is a very much a distinct possibility. So it, that this whole thing could really be the genesis for an awful lot of fun momentum for the mm -hmm. city and for those involved, so. Yeah. I guess with that, uh, we'd open it up for any questions you might have and see if we can. I've got one, Jimmy Orr with Cowboy State Daily. Jeff, this is for you. You're a lifelong citizen of Cheyenne. What does it mean to you to, uh, to be able to accomplish this? This is a big deal. It is a big deal, and as, as was stated, you know, generations of our citizens have a lot of sentimental memories of that property. So I think when uh, that, you know, we, we all know, we all saw the, the disrepair that it had fallen into, but once the fire uh, really destroyed that property, um, I think, I, I, you know, I, I think we didn't just lose a building, but we lost uh, part of our identity. I mean, that was such a historic staple and, um, you know, so much legislative business uh, was conducted there, as you pointed out in an article uh, last week, I believe. So to uh, really see something literally rise from the ashes is uh, it's 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 just really I'm really happy about it. It's very satisfying, and it's uh, I cannot wait to see the finished product. Quick follow up. Um, you still talk to the person that you went to prom with. That they <laughs> I actually do. She, she, she actually lives in Omaha now and is a true Nebraska fan. I'm, I know uh, Mayor Collins and, uh, and uh, Dr. Rennie will be happy about that. But yes, and uh, she and uh, you know this has gotten a lot of regional coverage as as it should. Uh, to your point, Jimmy, I connected with a couple of friends who were out. Uh, here for Frontier Days from uh, one lives in California now and, w and one lives in Texas. And the first question they asked me when I saw them is, when is something going to be done about the hitching post? Because it just means so much to so many. And I told them that we were, we were very, very close and that hopefully I'd have some good news for them soon. And, and they've seen the, uh, the press and have uh, reached out to me to, to tell all of us good job.
Congratulations. Thanks. And kind of just jumping off of that a little bit as well too is it just sense the connection that everybody has with it. That's why we've really tried to honor that site and keeping the name of the hitching post. Everybody's familiar with that, not only in the state, but you know, regionally as well too. So continuing to kind of honor that uh, in the form of keeping it, you know, as a hitching post plaza, just revamping it. And then everything we have going in there from the development side is making sure that we just take care of that site. And one of the biggest things that we're continuing to work on right now is one of the biggest staples that's at least still remaining there that's that's worth something is that sign you know there's a big hitching post sign so basically one of the goals is is to uh, uh, renovate that and kind of get that back up to its glory days so then that's still the staple of wow. pulling into the development <coughs> that's great news. wow that's great news any other questions yeah uh, please Anna Black. Yeah, so uh, not not at this time. So basically, it's this is multiple phases to do this. That's why it's kind of taken so long for it to even kind of get going. So the first phase is uh, uh, taking care of the asbestos abatement as well as the demo. Now, we anticipate that hopefully taking about two months, but that's all kind of weather permitting. As, as Richard had kind of mentioned before, uh, or is Jeff one of the two, but we've got to watch out for wind factors as well too. You know, we can't do it when there's high amount of wind, which Unfortunately, in Wyoming, we get a little bit of that, you know, Cheyenne <laughs> in particular. Okay. So, 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 yeah, so it's all kind of weather permitting. I mean, the biggest goal is now is just getting those buildings on the ground and getting them disposed of before we get too deep into fall and definitely the winter where we start playing around with, uh, you know, snow and, and those different elements. So, so the goal is definitely to start, you know, going vertical in the spring. It's just we're just focused on that phase one of trying to get everything on the ground. Yeah. All the infrastructure underneath needs to be replaced with the exception of the water. Yeah. So I mean it's it's dated. I I didn't realize it, but if you if you Google it, that property was built in 1929. That's a, I would have never guessed that, but mm -hmm. kind of gives you some idea though about what's what's under the ground. So so and then once we get that stuff taken care of, and then he's exactly right. Then we go to kind of that second phase, which is uh, focused on rerouting the utilities, upgrading all those items that need the water, the sewer, the electrical. And then kind of a couple along with that is doing the new public roadway uh, running along the east side of the property that'll tie into the ice skating rink into the back. And then kind of what we had mentioned before is potential future developments. What that also allows it to do is to give good access to kind of the, what we've known as the back 40 as well too, especially once Grant kind of ties in, it'll give great access to those areas back behind and then could uh, assist the city with you know, their plan of that five acres that they have of the gymnastic center and the rec room and a few of those other items. It hopefully will kind of spark some of that development on the backside. Richard, or Robert, uh, yeah. how did you come up with the idea? Well, so the original plan was I'd driven past it a hundred times, just like everybody had. And so just seeing it as, uh, it was just such a significant property to where it's like, okay, what can we do with this? So the first thought was, was can we renovate those? You know, can we turn them into uh, uh, condos or something like that? And then as we got deeper into it and learned the history of the amount of asbestos and the amount of uh, just uh, stuff that occurred in there, that wasn't necessarily feasible to do that. It, it would have just cost way too much to actually do that. So then kind of went back to, it was like, okay, can we just figure out a, a solution to get the buildings cleaned up and to get it down so we can start planning to go vertical. And that's where really brainstormed with the city and then with uh, Richard in particular of, of like, okay, how can we do that? How can we financially feasibly do it? So the first thing we had to do was get the buildings listed as structurally unsound, which, which we were able to do just because of the dire state that they were in. And then that allowed us to do an, a form of asbestos abatement that was uh, economically made sense. And so then once we had that piece in, then it's like, okay, well, where's the rest of the money's gonna come from? And that's where, you know, definitely partnering with the banner folks um, in regards to getting that stuff lined up. And I will say um, carefully that um, uh, kudos to the city and to Robert for just getting the property bought. Um, there were some significant challenges and hurdles that were overcome to get to the closing table with the title company and uh, uh, to all of you, kudos for your patience and your perseverance because uh, that was not an easy undertaking. Yeah, and on that, I want to thank some folks on my team in regards to the agents and everybody I was working with. That they were working with the seller a bunch, and and just because of all the complications, you know, Amy Smith in particular was having several conversations 
uh, sometimes daily uh, with getting that done to make sure that we could get it all acquired. So it was definitely a team effort. Everybody from the city, I know Mayor Collins had several conversations with the seller, making sure that she was comfortable so we could get this done. So, and then the support from Banner providing certain documentation that gave her confidence that we could, you know, take down this project uh, just because of the, the past uh, developers who had come in and weren't able to do it and kind of hit dead ends. Uh, she was a little hesitant to, uh, to really go deep into it with us. And therein lies the beauty of the TIF. I mean, mm -hmm. this thing is just beautiful for for uh, using a TIF. Mm -hmm. So, so outside of the sign, the entire area will be scraped. Yep. Yep. Exactly. Yep. So all the buildings will be demolished and uh, uh, disposed of properly. Um, and then basically we'll be tearing up all the asphalt, all the material, and then basically redoing the site plan, which uh, we have over here. This is kind of a loose site plan of what we're anticipating kind of going in there. You know, and what's the timeline, do you think? Uh, for what, what, what part? When Obviously it's, multiple. When it's, uh, when it's scraped clean. Mm -hmm. uh, so scraped clean, we're hoping to have done by the first of the year. Wow. Yeah. Because oh. really the biggest thing is getting down those buildings from, in regards to ripping up the asphalt, I mean, really we can do that in a matter of weeks. It's just a matter of getting those buildings down and getting them hauled off. After that, everything from the cleaning of the site will go relatively quick. And when do you think a, a, the first building might surface? Uh, it'll be springtime, I would guess. We've that got quickly. a lot of, yeah, I, I think we can do it. Once again, it's weather permitting on that demo, right. um, but I think that that's definitely realistic to be able to do that. Just for clarification, there's already a motel being built within the TIF boundaries. They've started um, foundation work out there already. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's huh. the old atlas. Exactly. Yep. Yes. Yep. Oh, it goes. It goes uh, to the atlas. It goes past the atlas. The, the tip district. The district. Yes. Got it. I believe it's a Hampton. Hampton it district. is. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. That was our. That was not only the atlas slot, but our our little piece that we had. We had that too. Yeah. Correct. So. In developing this on your conceptual plan, is there, you know, you said you're going to start building as soon as spring. What's the first building you anticipate going up? Well, I think we'll have a lot of movement up there. Uh, in regards to the, the hotel, we've had a lot of conversations with that developer, and they're wanting to go in springtime. As quick as we get it cleaned up, they're wanting to go probably the end of Q1, Q2 of next year. Um, and then the other stuff is still kind of a moving target. Some of the stuff on the back that, that we look at developing ourselves, kind of the five store or some of the taller buildings, those ones we'd like to start getting going uh, probably spring, maybe summertime of next year to start that phasing out. And then we're still in conversations with, you know, the bank and the steakhouse and all of that kind of stuff. But I think that realistically in the spring, you could see two to three buildings going up there, um, you know. I didn't look cl close there, those five buildings, are they commercial or residential? So it's a combination. Uh, what kind of the vision is there is uh, doing retail on the bottom and then condos above it kind of thing. And uh, just, you know, that's kind of been a big initiative of the city is kind of getting folks kind of living downtown a little bit. I know that's a little bit further than right downtown, but uh, it's kind of a combination deal there of, of providing for retail and then uh, uh, condos above. And it's fair to say there's a lot of people kicking the dirt and uh, speculating and uh, checking with Robert about uh, having some interest in possibly uh, I don't think there's going to be a shortage of demand I really don't mm -hmm. no. and so I think one thing one thing that we can all be happy about is one of the main uh, gateways to our community is going to be vastly improved from its uh, previous condition mm -hmm. needless to say it's urban renewal yeah correct yeah. Richard I, I see on on the uh, form here that Uh, I'm working on that. <laughs> I had to throw that out. <laughs> so, do you have a uh, grand opening ceremony planned? Or well, will you be having something? We definitely will. Um, yeah, w once we really get that site clean and we really start, then we will be doing something like that. Nothing on the schedule yet, just because it's a little bit of a moving target, like I said, with that demo in particular. But we will be doing events out there that will really kind of, uh, you know, kind of get that, you know, the new the new hitching post, if you want to call it, we'll be doing a release on that. Are you going to invite Michael to grave? <laughs> you know, that would be a great awesome. idea. That would be a great idea if we could get Michael to grieve to come back yeah. for that. I'm not sure he would. I know that, uh, that, uh, that you know, he had a lot of connection to the old hitch and, and uh, you know, seeing how it's become uh, was, was uh, really disappointing to him, but uh, to get him back here for that would be great. I'd like, if, if, if it's worth anything, I'll take
Okay, it, I, I, and I do realize this is this is all just very still, very conceptual. Yes, right. without a doubt. But I do like the idea, or at least your thought process, you know, regarding some, you know, the the parking garage, mm -hmm. something like that, to where, you know, then it would it, it would make a lot of this very walkable. Mm -hmm. um, I, I really like that. Again, you know, I, I realize a lot of things have to fall in place for that to happen. For yeah, you, sure, but. I really like um, where you're going with that as far as, you know, making a lot of this area, especially that it looks like, you know, that would enable this back, this back part to be very walkable. So I don't know if you wanted to talk about that. Yeah, and you're exactly right. I mean, that's kind of the goal of designing that plaza and hence the name and stuff like that is, is really kind of having a, a little community here inside of the hitching post, you know, to where, you know, I, I could see it to where you have retail, you have some restaurants, you have that kind of an open plaza area you see in a lot of areas you know in different different places so and then that's where that parking garage does come in because then you've got great walking access to either going up to you know some of the stuff along the Lincoln Way frontage or kind of coming back to these yeah. different areas and and then once again you know with partnership with the city I could see it for overflow for some of their city events which I know they're really going to be doing a lot more there you know they've got great access to that as well too and just the facilities that we could see coming in I think it services uh, the ice and event center very well as well too so that's a, a big partnership that we're trying to do is how does this function well with everybody around us and then incorporate in the new elements that we're trying to bring in you know the, this the west side has always been difficult I mean it's a difficult area especially after the fire so how will this revitalize as part of the community do you think mm -hmm. well, it's conjecture of course but um, the, the nuisance part of the property should uh, clean up itself over time. It, it, it'll feed on itself, as, especially if we can keep the momentum and keep, keep going down Lincoln Way. But uh, as far as being a nuisance property, of course, uh, that'll all go away with the, with the destructions of the properties, uh, of the old properties. So, mm -hmm. but the other, you know, the other thing we haven't touched on is the economic impact of this. I mean, we, we sat down the other day, Richard, and ran some preliminary numbers, and just uh, without any turns of the dollar, we were thinking the impact was in the neighborhood of 40 to $50 million. And so you start taking that times a multiple, uh, you know, this, this has a seven figure, eight figure kind of implications with uh, um, actually eight or nine uh, zeros uh, implications in terms of economic development. So this is a big deal for the city. Yeah. Well, that that you, did, right? you need to get to work. Yeah, I know, exactly. I know. That's what I just was. That's why I was running a minute late. But I think this is another example, though. I mean, you know, we've already had some examples of, you know, where some you know, investors and folks have invested downtown. I mean, you know, Jimmy, if you look at, like, the Warehouse 21 property, right? you know, um, where that was a, a blighted, you know, a very blighted spot to where they've, they've made a heck of an investment there. And you've got... Uh, you know, the folks are working on the on the homes, you know, homes warehouses. And I mean, yeah, you know, so I mean, yeah. I think there are examples. Yeah, and 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 I know something that's 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 near and dear to all of us is you know the the Reed Avenue corridor, which yep. is is burgeoning too, which I think has a lot of opportunity for um, for the same type of development. So I think this is we could maybe serve to encourage you know, hey, you know. This is a big thing going on down here. A lot of investment, it's, it's worth doing. Yeah, we really hope that this is going to be like that anchor and that spark for the West End because it is such a large right. site, you know, and, and we've got our eye on a few other properties kind of on there as well too, uh, kind of working back towards downtown that we're looking to uh, revitalize as well too. So we hope to really be a big player in this one in particular just to get a lot of folks excited about that West End because there for a minute it wasn't all that exciting. So right. so now there'll be a lot of movement, a lot of changes going on there, which usually does spark you know additional development to take place. It's a little bit surprising to me that TIF hadn't been used in Wyoming uh, hardly at all. One one time, I guess it was here in Cheyenne, and it was a special deal with, I believe it was a power company or something. But uh, yeah, and uh, you know TIF's been around since the early '50s, and uh, especially for blighted properties, it just works incredibly well. So, what what is the simplest way to explain TIF? <coughs> Absolute simplicity. Uh, it's basically taking future revenues, tax revenues, and uh, giving them a, uh, a capitalized value up front in order to use that.
to build the infrastructure. So, but for the development, you wouldn't generate that increased revenue. So we're just using future revenues to, to make the uh, project work. Got it. And then you, you know, and you can use that revenue, that funding mechanism for things like uh, the environmental remediation, utility relocation, uh, public improvements, Roads. street curb and gutter, yep, yep. and all of which adds value to right. uh, a developer taking on the property. We've done a few others, uh, uh, primarily in South Dakota, and, and what we see is that municipalities, taxing districts, even though you can run these on a 25-year term, uh, most municipalities will work extremely hard to get them paid off, obviously for the reason being that the sooner they get the bank out of the way, the sooner the revenues go into the coffers of the city for all kinds of other fun things to do with tax revenues. So. But in the short term, the bank is kind of the conduit to um, be able to capitalize the, the, the money needed to build the infrastructure. So what we actually end up doing is making a loan to the city, or the city's taxing district, to be more specific. Got it. No further Any other any questions? I just have a comment. I really appreciate your tenacity and not giving up, because it would have been really easy multiple times, I'm sure, yeah. <laughs> um, and the support of the bank in this process. But I'm really, uh, what excites me about this project is, one, I also went to prom there. Um, <laughs> I married the individual I went to prom there. <laughs> <laughs> we're still married 44 years later. But, um, I saw him the other night, right? Yeah, that's right, that's right. 44 years later, we're still married. But um, I'm really excited that we have a young contractor that is wanting to invest in Cheyenne, stay in Cheyenne, and really, um, has put forth an effort entrepreneurially to do this project. So kudos to you, mm -hmm. and thanks for uh, believing in uh, Spiker Construction because mm -hmm. it's a risk anytime you invest in a project like this. But I think it's going to pay off huge benefits. So congratulations. Well, that's really why we're doing it. It's honestly for it's it's for the whole city as a whole. So we appreciate and, and love hearing that. And it's it's one of those few ones where 99 percent of the population they want to see that down. It's 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 a pain in the butt. And so. So no, that, that's really what we're doing. This is uh, more of a commu city community project than it is anything else. So yeah, I know we're a private developer, but really it's it's the whole city who's participating in this. Well, the only thing <coughs> I've got to say is that after the press conference, if you guys got a few minutes, Pete and I'd like to show you the property downtown. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd love to go. I'd love to go with you for that. Actually, if you want to wait after the press conference, we do have hors d'oeuvres and some mild adult beverages. So if you you want to sell the guy on something, maybe you should. Uh... <laughs> what are you talking about? That? I've ran the numbers on the Heinz building. So so we'll, we'll keep working on that one. We'll keep working on it. Well, we have others like Pump House, all sorts of projects. Mm -hmm. No, well, you know, there, there's a lot of exciting projects that we can do here. I think this is just one uh, amongst many that we'll be doing here in the next, you know, five and ten years. Um, it, it's it's exciting to to have some of these more <coughs> historical projects you can work on that are very significant to the city. So those are the fun ones to do. And it's likely if if we think you're going to like the TIF as much as as we do that um, there's other projects that TIF financing will work, and not only for Cheyenne but. Likely, this could be a snowball across the entire state sure. because there's all kinds of these projects that are out there. So, okay, Thank you. please Thank feel you. free to stick around. Thank you, guys. Thank you for your time.